Hello, Rob from Fountain Pen Journey. With my top fountain pens of 2020, which also includes the worst fountain pens of 2020, in my experience. So I decided I was gonna do a top five, then it turned into a top 10, then a top 12, and I've basically just gone to the point where I've just gone, you know what, I'm gonna look back through my notebooks and work out which fountain pens I actually really enjoyed using this year. The ones that I kept refilling time after time, the ones that I just loved from the start, things like that. So it's going to be a bit of a bit of a long video, so brace yourselves for this. 2020, as we know, has been a uh, pretty rubbish year. So what I want to do is start off on this top video, a uh, top fountain pen video with my top worst fountain pens of 2020. So I'll get the negative out of the way before I move on to the positive. So I'm going to get that out of the way for now because I won't be using that because I won't be writing with these pens. Well actually I could show you one of them uh, and start off actually. Yeah you know what I'm going to start off with one of these because my dog's got growling. Oi what? What's wrong? Something's walking past. So I'm going to start off with my um, infamous Faber-Castell Hexo. I really wanted to love this pen. It was a disappointment from the advertising. It looked like it was going to be something quite different to this rather rounded pen. Um, basically, Hexo, you managed to create a rounded, faceted thing. It's not a hexagon hexagonal in any real way other than it's got some rounded facets um, and I really wanted to love this pen but I just didn't I did my review of this pen and really had a moan about it and I've moaned about it in other videos so end of 2020 promise you this is the last time I moan about the Faber-Castell Hexo why do I moan about it because I mean if there shouldn't be anything wrong with this pen and Faber Castell nibs. There we go. That's why. End up with. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't bloody write. Um, it's a terrible design. The design's not what I expected, but it's a really badly writing pen. I have messed around with the nib to the point where I thought, you know what? I'm not even going to bother now. I'm going to move on to my second massive disappointment uh, of 2020. So that's the Faber Castell Hexo. I'm putting all of the uh, the reviews of the pens that I have reviewed in the uh, description down below. So if you ever want to just take a look down there and check out those reviews, so you can see exactly what I think of these pens, then good and bad. Remember, uh, then check those out, please. So that's the Hexo terrible terrible writer now another pen which often gets uh, I'm just oop, just gonna have to move around a bit let my dog out of the room because he's decided he wants to uh, go and cause trouble somewhere else um, another brand because Faber Castell the Hexo is in my view a dud and fountain pen reviewers generally review one fountain pen because it's what they're supplied with or it's what they purchase. And, you know, fountain pens by their very nature can have inconsistencies with the design, of the, uh, with the manufacturer of the nib, um, possibly other defects, things like that. So when any reviewer, myself included, says this is a terrible fountain pen, you might buy one and find that yours is absolutely fine. As for the fanboys out there, I do like Faber-Castell. I have several Faber-Castell pens, which I'm really loving using this year, which haven't made it into this top list because they are just too new. Um, so it's not necessarily a detriment against the brand because I am going to talk about this next pen. The Diplomat Magnum. I didn't even realise I actually had three of these pens. I tested two of these and I did a rather jokey review about it because they are shockingly bad writers. 
One Faber Castell hexo can slip through the net, but when you've got at least two diplomat magnums which don't write and they are really bad and no matter what you do to the nib you can't get the thing to write properly uh, I suspect it's a fit ma uh, uh, feed manufacturing defect so the diplomat magnum yeah I did a review of this early this year it's a pen that I've had for two or three years now and I tried it first experience of using a diplomat fountain pen hated it however diplomat fountain pens are excellent but in my experience two diplomat magnums says to me there is a problem with the diplomat magnum i know other people have said that it's you know it's a really good writer but in my opinion i'm never going to buy another one of those so that's the diplomat magnum third disappointment for this year and this is a bit of a surprise but still talking about nibs is this special edition cult pens mini made by caveco and i really recommend that you check out my review of this fountain pen to see exactly what i think of it because it's there's a lot to like but there's so much that went wrong with this pen and it, it, it's a shame because I think it, it's it almost feels like cult pens went to Caveco and said please can you design us a fountain pen which is a pocket pen it's all metal it does this it does that it's great and they went with that design remit and thought and Caveco thought you know what we don't want to make it any better than our Caveco All Sport so let's put a few issues into it it's almost like that happened um, unscrew the cap and it's it's it, it posts badly the writing experience in my opinion is absolutely shocking i mean it it really is crap <laughs> i mean i've got to admit and this is the problem with a lot of caveco nibs this was a um i believe a broad nib as soon as you start straying into broad and double broad territory with Caveco nibs, you end up with skipping and hard starting and f various issues like that. Unpleasant pen to write with. I was glad when I emptied the cartridge. Not a great pen. Real disappointment. And we're still talking about nibs. Um, controversially, this thing, the Moon Man M800 rip off of an Italian design and I actually happened to buy this particularly because it was the pen BBS acrylic amber is a cat this wonderful chatoyant amber and black uh, resin uh, not resin acrylic material and because I tend to concentrate on the lower end cheap pens I decided to go for the Moonman M800 this pen with the moon man nib now i'm not a fan of moon man nibs at the best of times but spend an extra 10 pounds and you can get this pen with a bock nib now bock nibs are pretty good i do like them they're not excellent and i thought i don't want to spend an extra 10 pounds on this pen just to get a bock nib um and quite honestly i wished that i really had because the moon man nib that these pens are supplied with it's almost like they said you know what we're going to rip off somebody else's design make a decent enough quality fountain pen ah but we've got a load of really bad moon man nibs that we have to use up i'll tell you what let's give people the option of having this pen with a bock nib as well and i think it was almost like they had a really bad batch of moon man nibs that they stuck into these moon man moon man m800s and it's terrible even for a moon man nib which to be honest aren't awful in general i just don't particularly like them they're fine and dry this nib just wrote shockingly badly just skipping all over the place and i tried to play around with it i've tried flossing the tines with brass shim i've tried nib smoothing i've tried everything i've looked at the nib under a loop and all the rest of it tried everything and it just doesn't write well so this is probably one of those nibs that will get swapped out for a bock nib or some other nib um 
just so that I can use this pen because it's unusable with this Moon Man nib. So there we have the, uh, the negatives of 2020. Pop those to one side. Pop 2020 to bed because let's face it, I wish it was because it was not a good year. Right, so these are going to be my top fountain pens of 2020. So these, as I said earlier, these are the, the if you like, not the best pens, but my favourite pens which I've been loving writing with and using. I've been impressed with the designs. I've been impressed with how they write. So, and they're in no particular order. I'm not running these 1 to 11, I think it is. Um, it is purely based on what I think of the pens. So let's start off with the first one, which was, in all honesty, a massive surprise. I reviewed this pen in the green version and I enjoyed it so much that I actually bought a black version purely to use at work. This is a Faber-Castell fountain pen. So you see I'm not completely against the brand. This was a hell of a lot cheaper than the um, Faber-Castell Hexo. In fact, this thing costs about, I think it's about £10, roughly, from Colt Pens here in the UK. This is the Faber-Castell Fresh. And I couldn't get on with the looks, the design of this fountain pen, because it is, I mean, that clip is, it's, it's damned ugly. It's not an attractive fountain pen. And I was really, really sort of like, oh dear. And then when you uncap it, and you write with it, you go, ooh, 10 pounds? Really? 10 pounds for this? writes better than any Lamy I've had, which, you know, I, I know Lamy nibs can be a bit inconsistent, but this is really good for a dirt cheap cartridge converter fountain pen that takes standard international cartridges. There's one in there now, and one in the barrel, because I keep using this pen at work. This is my uh, one of my everyday carry work fountain pens. And the Faber-Castell Fresh is brilliant i think the only problem i found with this pen is i can't actually show you on this uh, this pen very easily is the ink window here it's open there's no pane of glass or anything inside there it is just open i can't take the cartridge out to show you and this is the problem it is actually it, it's really low down which is a good thing because from a um, practicality point of view you'd be able to see the uh, ink level when it is low um, so I can't take the cartridge out because obviously that's down here but when you clean this pen and this is something that I did not mention in my review um, you put your uh, bulb syringe into the end of the section there and of course this is all open so you have to really clamp your fingers and the fatter your fingers are the better seal you're going to get clamp your fingers into this bit to actually use the bulb syringe to flush out all the um, all the ink that's in there in the feed so one downside of it but not a massive issue and i still love this fountain pen really oops it's probably hard starting because i've been talking for a bit but um, really really excellent value really good writing fountain pens so that's the faber castell fresh another fountain pen which i uh, happen to have uh, also reviewed recently and published recently is the moon man m 100 i'm getting my not moon man what am i doing this is this is why i'm getting confused the pelican <laughs> m 100 moonstone Really nice looking fountain pen. Really nice wet nib. It's not, it's, I mean, it, there's nothing to say about the nib. It's smooth, it writes, never any hard starts, uh, but it's really wet, which is something that I greatly appreciate. So I also happen to like gray fountain pens, and this is a really good gray 
translucent demonstrator fountain pen and in this natural light you can see that there are some silvery sparkles in there however in sunlight and if you check out the thumbnail for my uh, review of the Moonman M100 am I calling this the M100? it's the M200 it's the Pelican M200 <laughs> Moonstone fountain pen if you check out the thumbnail of my Pelican um, M200 uh, Moonstone fountain pen review that thumbnail has a close up of the uh, the cap with the shimmers in and that shows you the um, sort of rainbow effect that you get in sunlight so really really nice fountain pen very pleased with that an upcoming review this absolute dream of a pen platinum 3776 currently it's just run out of ink which is really disappointing <laughs> that will be uh, filled up later today this is a pen review that you need to see if you actually think you know what I could buy cheap pens from China and fork out and get maybe three or four or five pen BBS fountain pens or I could save up and get a platinum 3776 forget about the pen BBS pens buy one of these this is an amazing pen like really really excellent fountain pen check out the review coming soon hit subscribe if you haven't already and turn on all notifications so you don't miss that one another great pen from 2020 the Namisu Naos aluminium satin black fountain pen made here in the UK in Scotland and this is superb this has been in my daily use at home for months and months and months it's a very industrial design fountain pen very large pen oops that was, that was me not the nib very very wet medium nib <laughs> gorgeous to write with like really 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 excellent very nice nibs brilliant design well made I can't, I, I, watch the review when it comes out. It's it's it, it's been recorded, but I haven't uh, haven't scheduled it to be published just yet. So once again, hit subscribe, and you want to see this review because this is an excellent fountain pen. This is a big beastie pen, very very highly recommended. Moving on to the controversial again. These things. What are they? Well, if you haven't been watching my channel, you might think he's bought four Lamy, Lamy Dialogue 3s. Well, this guy must be absolutely minted. No, I concentrate on the cheaper fountain pens. I have a budget and I have, I have a limit, which I'm quite happy to go up to occasionally. These four fountain pens aren't Lamy fountain pens. These are LM Focus 3 fountain pens, even though they have Lamy on the branding. When you look at the nib in close-up, it won't show up on the camera, but it's even on the Lamy on the nib. And yeah, it's a Lamy Dialogue 3 copy. And I have been absolutely so impressed with these fountain pens. I will not bore you by writing with all of them. I'll use the piano white version. Oops, a bit skippy. I haven't used this pen for a good couple of weeks, but there we go. It's writing again, lovely. Writing experience is phenomenal. Very wet. These are fine nibs as well. Really, really excellent writers fun retracting the nibs i'll show you the champagne color as well check out my review of this pen if you have not done so already once again i haven't been using these pens for about a week because i've had a lot of stuff on with christmas and various other bits so i bought the full series so we've got the champagne 
you'll see them all together in this video so this is the champagne color which is a sort of silvery matte finish uh, with a yellowish tinge the piano white version which is a matte white finish the piano black version which is a glossy black finish and the matte black finish which is of course matte black so they are all four LM Focus 3 fountain pens side by side and I'm very pleased that I bought these pens and I will update as promised my review of this uh, fountain pen if I have any issues with this pen because I'm half expecting it to just fall to pieces or something because for the price if they copied the uh, Lamy Dialogue 3 to the extent where it's not going to fall apart this is an absolute steal for 2020 and forget about the copyright issues um, I know that some people have issues some people have what they might call morals but I think we all have opinions about you know copying things I'm not going to say any more about it but that is my collection of LM Focus 3 fountain pens. I'm going to stick to the controversial as well because one of my most popular videos of 2020 has been the Noodler's Ahab fountain pen and it came as quite a surprise because it overtook my um, very in-depth review of the Lamy 2000 where I use a fine and medium nib version of that fountain pen. And I always thought that's bound to be my longest running, most popular video. But amazingly, the Noodler's Ahab fountain pen review actually took over that video this year. And I think what's happened is a lot of people, I mean, I, I, I bought these pens and found that they were awful pens to write with. They just basically leaked ink everywhere or didn't write. You'd railroad and that would be the end of the writing for about four or five hours. Just terrible, terrible pens. But in my review I talk about the fix that I discovered and I also link the fix to uh, getting these Noodler's Ahab fountain pens to write correctly in there. I haven't got this one inked up. This is the bumblebee finish, which is nice sort of swirled yellow and black finish. And I love writing with these fountain pens. They're great fun, but they are still messy, pen, messy fountain pens. They do burp ink. They do leak ink. I'm always a bit concerned if I'm using a Noodler's Ahab anywhere where, um, where ink might not be welcome. So that is pretty much most of our house. Um, <laughs> and they don't carry well at work either they just basically leak all the ink into the cap if you you know give this sort of any movement so the good desk pens good fun to play with but yeah I love writing with them this is why this features in this video of 2020 I'm going to talk about another special edition fountain pen for 2020 now, I haven't actually featured any of the Caveco Sport Special Edition fountain pens in my video this year here. Mainly because they were collectible, but just not actually that inspiring. The Galen Leather, uh, the Caveco Sport Cognac Galen Leather Edition, yeah, nice pen. Very happy to add it to my collection. I've used it a great deal since I... Um, went through a couple of cartridges with it no I haven't this pen I have so this is why this one made it to this video this year and of course this is the Lamy Safari 2020 special edition colors this is the candy color series this is the mango the violet I quite honestly struggle with it makes me feel a bit nauseous but it's part of my collection the aquamarine very attractive but I really really do like this mango color with the matching clip really really nice fountain pen I'm very happy with it it makes me happy when I'm using it and certainly this year in 2020 during the summer months I was using this pen all the time 
and I think it, it, it it's helped me. It's cheery, you know, nice summery mango yellow colour. Really happy with that one. Going way back early in 2020, I discovered the Parker brand. And this, Parker Jotta, is quite honestly one of my most favourite work fountain pens from the early part of 2020 before everything went so horribly badly wrong and I really like the Parker Jotter a huge amount I mean it, it you know easy to uncap posts really nicely deeply becomes a really really good length doesn't add any back weighting really really well designed pen metal cap so you know it's not going to Right, the plastic is pretty good quality. I'd say that's fairly solid. Decent section, nice length. A little bit narrow, maybe. Smallish nib, but these, and this unfortunately isn't inked up, um, these are, in my opinion, one of the best cheap fountain pens that you can buy because the nibs of Parker's, certainly the Parker Vector and Parker Jota, this pen, uh, the nibs, really, really good. Really, really excellent fountain pens. Very good value. And you can say what you want about proprietary cartridges, but so many people recommend Lamy Safari's proprietary cartridges. So, you know, this is why it featured in my um, best fountain pens for beginners video. Excellent fountain pens. Really, really like using these. Very good everyday carry fountain pens. Uh, moving back to my Father's Day present from my wife. This is the, uh, it's not what you think, if you're just about to say, hang on. This is the Wingsong 6, Wing Song 699 vacuum filler. It's available as a piston filler as well. And came with a fine nib and, oh my life, that fine nib writes really really well it's incredibly smooth really nicely wet not overly wet just really nicely wet really good for long writing periods holds a lot of ink vac filler which is fun and also a pain to clean out but really really nicely designed fountain pen well once again another chinese copy of a very nice fountain pen but I'm very happy with this and this was one of those pens that I really liked the look of did a review of it and yeah I love it really really nice fountain pens and that's the Wingsong 699 vacuum filler um, early in 2020 these things entered the market the platinum prefount very very cheap inexpensive pens from platinum i got medium nibs i got most of the uh, colors they are obviously still available platinum proprietary cartridges on you un unfortunately uh, but they do work as eyedroppers and i did a video about uh, using a platinum profound eye and loved it no burping um really nice wet nibs i mean even for a japanese nib these medium nibs on these pens are pretty pretty broad um really lovely pens they post well very comfortable excellent length posted or unposted clear demonstrator nice colors there's orange green graphite gray that sort of thing so demonstrator fencing pens really really nice excellent value so yeah very very happy with these fountain pens they are um, in my opinion right up there with possibly some of the best fountain pens for beginners really nice fountain pens so i love these very happy to have discovered the platinum brand through these um, fountain pens and I shall stay in Japan for this one. Um, 2020 was the year that I discovered Japanese fountain pens. Properly discovered Japanese fountain pens. This is a Sailor 
fountain pen, a Sailor Le Cool in the Garnet edition, Sailor Japan. Quite a small fountain pen, I'll pop this next to the uh, Lamy Safari. So yeah, it's mm, two and a bit centimetres shorter, unposted. great deal shorter about the same length shorter but of course it does post and then it becomes much more of a usable size as you can see and of course the Lamy posts as well so stick those side by side if you do want to see them next to each other so there you go um the sailor le cool i was put off this fountain pen by other fountain pen reviewers why? Because they said, oh, it writes terribly. So there you have it. I didn't buy one of these pens for two years because I just thought, no, I've heard about the sale of the cool. It's a terrible writing fountain pen. But sometimes you just have to, you know, go with your heart. And I thought, you know what? I want to expand my, broaden my horizons and get into more of the Japanese brands in 2020. Started on that journey carrying on on my fountain pen journey to Japan in 2020 and in all honesty I'd say that these have actually these Japanese brands like Sailor Platinum uh, they're, they're, they're kind of trumping the German brands that I have liked so much from the very start of my fountain pen journey because I don't know they just seem to write nicely um, with I think the thing is I've always liked really nice very smooth nibs and these nibs are right with feedback but they're right effortlessly I mean, no pressure this Sailor Le Cool is only available with a fine nib no pressure but still nice and wet can you squeeze a bit more out yes you can so there you have it yeah the I mean, excellent i mean it's a steel nib this is a japanese fine but it's lovely to write with i never thought i would enjoy writing with these fountain pens because i honestly thought you know what these things are they're going to be too fine for me they're probably going to be too dry and after several years of using chinese fountain pens with fine nibs moon man i'm especially looking at you uh, pen BBS also. This is how a fine nib should write and I am so impressed with this fountain pen. I have others and I, I will be reviewing all of these in due course so if you want to check out the description below you won't find um, a link to that review just yet. I may well update this, um, this video at some point in the future when I have got around to uh, reviewing the sale of the cool but not yet you'll just have to take my word for it that this is a really really excellent little fountain pen very happy with that uh, we're nearly at the end and I'm going to talk about a fountain pen that's been in my collection for over a year which quite honestly I just keep going back to Indian fountain pen. This is the Ranga regular bamboo in green. So it's green acrylic and I just love this pen. I love the colour, I love the design, I love the shape, I love how it writes. It's got a bock nib. Um, other nib options are available from Ranga when you purchase these pens from them. It's eyedropperable, it takes cartridges, standard international cartridges, comes with a converter, really well made, nicely weighted, nice cap to hold, nice length, doesn't post, well it's not designed to be posted, put it that way, you can just about force it on but not recommended, nice length, nice comfortable pen to hold and I love this. And it keeps coming out. Every summer it gets to a certain point and I feel sort of tropical or something in summer. Some some mood hits me and I think, you know what, I really, really want to write with my Ranga regular bamboo. And I love it. So 
I think this could well feature in every top fountain pen video that I make into the future. So the Ranga Ranga Regular Bamboo, love it. I'm going to get rid of the Rhodia pad for now because we're on to the last pen. Special edition, 2020 special edition fountain pens. And I couldn't actually decide. I went with one of these and I thought, you know what, actually I'm I'm so sorely tempted to do the other one and I couldn't decide so both pens made the grade try and see if you can guess there we go Twisby the Twisby Eco special edition colours for 2020 in the standard range so the first one that came out was this one the yellow so the Twisby Eco Elect Twisby Eco Yellow Special Edition colour for 2020. Nice bright colour. I love it. It's industrial looking. Fantastic. Great piston filler fountain pen. I've never had any issues with Twisby's breaking. Um, round section, not a triangular grip like on the Eco T. Smallish nib, Twisby nibs. Um, medium. And I'm really, really happy. This pen kept being refilled with uh, KWZ. I think it was Walkover of Vistula. Um, or it could have been Baltic Memories. Can't remember, but one of those inks, nice blue ink, and loved it. Loved it. Several, several fills, and this holds a lot of ink. So you can see how much I, 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 uh, I actually wrote with this fountain pen. And then Twisby released this in 2020 the cement grey edition so the twisby eco cement grey and i think that together these two pens make such a nice industrial contrast you could just say that this is a nice bright yellow cheery fountain pen but i see it as an industrial design it looks very workmanlike with the black uh, piston mechanism and silver um, embellishments so i think that the twisby eco looks in yellow looks quite industrial maybe even with the red finial up there and the cement grey version I know some people and I think I, I listened to uh, pen boy, uh, the Pentertainment podcast that Penboy Roy does and he was discussing this and he was saying you know Twisby Eco cement grey and I can't remember whether it was him or his um, uh, the other guy on there, sorry, forgot his name. Um, I can't remember which one of them actually mentioned, you know, who would release a cement grey special edition. Well, I love grey fountain pens, so it was right up my street. And I actually think it's a really nice grey. It's a good colour. It goes with a whole range of inks. In fact, both of these pens, I think, go with pretty much any ink. You know, it goes with blues, blacks, reds, greens, purples, pinks, yellows even, <laughs> if you like yellow ink. It, they're really, really versatile, and I think that the cement grey edition is absolutely fantastic. I love it because it's an industrial looking design anyway, and the grey, cement grey, if they'd have called it Dove Grey, it might have actually put me off, but calling it Cement Grey actually appeals more to me. So I think the two Twisby Eco Special Editions for 2020, yeah, I think they were both worthy of a mention. So thank you very much for watching, and may your 2021, heading into the 20s now, the new decade, may your 2021 be much, much better than... 2020 i hope that you all have a very good new year i hope that you continue with your own fountain pen explorations and you know enjoy uh, enjoy using your fountain pen throughout the year and i wish you all wealth peace happiness and most importantly i think this year in uh, 2021 health so thank you very much for watching. If you haven't already, please do click the subscribe button because it helps me out a lot to know what uh, my viewers are watching and what they recommend. Leave comments down below about the pens. And I shall wish you a very happy 2021 and wish you all the best for the coming, uh, coming year. So thanks very much for watching again. Bye.